Hello everyone, my name is Alok Nido and welcome back to Tiny Bunny. In this video, we will unveil, unveil the mysteries of the bunny. Will there be any more monsters in the forest? Are there any more mysteries? Will we find it all? Who knows? Will we? I do not know. That's why we're going to find it out now. So this is where we left off last time. And real quick before we start, as you can see I have a blanket here and it's different from last time. Last time I used a little Winnie the Pooh blanket, but it was too small for my comfort so I took a bigger one. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just a pipsqueak. I couldn't wait to go out, looking for clues. I'm going outside. Yeah, right. You want, the you want the police to go around with your photograph next? The forest is so thick. Or the boy got snatched up by wild animals, or something even worse. Like the tiny bunny, perhaps. <gasps> Who knows? Even worse echoed through the hallway. I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. Now you might hear me a little a little bit whispering. That's because it's late at night. Now last time I also did kind of late at night, but my dad was very tired today so he's gone to sleep a little bit earlier than normal. So I have to be a little bit more quiet than normally so I can't like shout. Anyways. I won't go far, I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said, or should I repeat myself? Better go pack your school bag or play with Olya. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant the argument was over and Mom had the last word. She is the alpha predator in the family. <laughs> okay, well, ooh, to front yard, let's just escape. Anton! I'll whip you if you make a single step out of that door. Again. I need to distract mom somehow or I'll get scolded and my ass whipped with dad's leather belt. That would hurt a lot. Um, open. The dark stuffy closet. Mom says it smells like mice, but how would she know their smell? She hated when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe. If you go out actually, you should actually take that axe with you because if you get attacked by some wolf or some sh shadow, you can use this to slice them in half and stop them in their tracks. Oh, yeah. And Olya can't even be lured close to it. She thinks Babe, Babae, something something is living there. I tried to help her fight her fears once. I opened the door and turned on a dim lamp so she would see there was nothing but cobwebs. That's tools and scratched walls. She still didn't believe me and I like, and I like to hide in the closet and listen to Olya out, count outside. One, two, three, better hide from me. <sighs> I don't want to play a game. And then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster den. What's this? Oh, interesting. Uh, let's do the telephone first. My parents prohibited me from making long distance calls. But from time to time, I really wanted to hear my old friend. Sometimes I would just pick up the phone, listen to low, listen to the low hum of the zoomer and the distant crackling, imagining the wind howling in the eyes, leaden, leaden chords. And what else was there? Uh, this one. The cross had seen so many people come and go in this house. It was black, as if it, as if it is. As if it absorbed all humans seen from the long years it was hanging under the ceiling. After grandma died, mom was going to take it off and hang a horseshoe in its place as a lucky charm. But she cut herself with the cross, cross sharp 
corner and almost fell from the step ladder. Dad called it a sign from above and ordered the cross to be left alone in its rightful place. The rightful owner of this house. I don't know. Mom's picked up a family relic. My mom played with it when she was a little. When she was little, then she gifted it to me. El Alia was next in the succession line. The toy belonged to her now. She started at the dancing spindle as if it would, could show her something, a fairy tale, or maybe even our future. Now even my little sister was a bit too old for the old squeaky peg top. You know, always when I say Olya or try to say Olya, for some reason I always want to say Olivia for some reason. I know it's always like it's like it's almost like the same word so it just comes out. Anyways, two kitchen. Um open. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. Grandma kept ice cream for me and Olya there, but now I could only see meat bits for soup and a clumped together pelmeny. I grew to hate them already. Turn back. Okay. Let's see. Mm, this, 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 and this. Okay. The side of an old ocean freezer was checkered with my childish drawings. Mom's recipes and all kinds of stickers from bubblegum with dinosaurs that Olya liked so much. Among that still life picture, among that still life picture hung a piece of ruled paper with the phone number of the police officer who visited us, First Lieutenant Tikhanov. I read inside my mind, looking at the officer's sprawling handwriting. A scrap of paper was held by two pieces of broken magnet for, from some old Soviet toy, and those pieces just barely covered up the numbers as if it t t as if to taunt me. I learned toward it I learned I leaned toward it to unveil the mystery and take the piece to a safer place where it would wait for its time when I would finally find Vova and be the first to call the police with the happy news. So the telephone number is, I can't see the complete telephone number, it's two zero something something seven. I wonder what the rest is. Anton! Mom's reproachable eyes started at me, stared at me, started. What do you need it for? Hands off, you'll lose it, boy. Get your hands off then. Angering my mom was the last thing I wanted, so I lowered my hand. You know, I just realized that, um... Uh, yeah, this game plays in Russia, which I did not expect. I thought it would pl a, a play in some other country, but I didn't think it 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 a, 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 it plays in Russia. I did not think that, to be honest. I took a peek at Mom's crossword. She would get very angry when someone gave her advice. So me and Dad faked knowing the answer and being about to reveal it all the time. I smelled at that fleeting thought. Vertical nine letters, the name of the Philistine deity that protected them from the viper bites and had a nickname, the Lord of Flies. Second letter is E. Hmm. What the hell? Why does this always happen? Anyways, what, wait, what if we try to do this again? Of course, it won't be that easy. Okay, what's this? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, this. Emir Khan of Russia has declared this state of emergency due to adverse weather conditions. According to the weather forecast, a cyclone is moving toward the region. Expect heavy snowfall, blizzards, and snow drifts on the road. Keep your eyes open and take care of yourself. Can I press the radio again? <laughs> была обстреляна неизвестными вооруженными лицами. Definitely Russian. Куплю жене сапоги. Это просто Леня. АО ММ. Okay, can we press it again? No, 
was terrifying. Imagine you hear this music at night. That would be terrifying. And I just, I got a lot of goosebumps when that played. Okay, and then this one. The, dis the discrepant and stain. Covered calendar was once my favorite form of entertainment in grandma's house. I remember waking up and running to the kitchen so I could tear off yesterday's leaf first thing in the morning, as if, it the, as if the coming day would get lost in the tiger forest without my help. One day closer to New Year's, one day closer to Grandma's funeral. <gasps> I haven't touched this calendar, calendar for years now. Since the time they started writing dark and spooky death chants that only made me gloomy instead of funny proverbs and superstition to be exact. I grabbed a dusty calendar leaf without caution and it tore off effortlessly. Sadly, the spooky description from my childhood was still there. Seven horses carry the log. If seven can't carry, bring the eighth from the ferry. They will take it away and never come back. This is the fate, the log cannot escape. Ooh, I love these like rhythm, like like this story that rhyme really good. Ooh, I like them. If they make really well. I crumbled the grey leaf and threw it into the waste bin, hoping to get rid of that anxiousness that washed over me. It was spreading inside me like an ink stain on blot blotting paper. Let me press this again. I won't ever touch it again. Can we touch the mom? <laughs> Can we touch the mom? That sounds wrong. Can we like click on her? Ooh, it works. It was difficult to lie to mom, but there was no other way for me to run away from home. Mom, something's wrong with the TV. The picture is dim and there are stripes all over the screen. Mom's face became visibly distorted. Disorted. Something. Are you killing me here? So you have had enough of shooting the stupid ducks now? <gasps> Okay, okay, this is probably a reference. I do not know, but maybe, but um, there was a time, I'm not sure if this game actually existed, but there was a game called Duck Hunter. Now, I'm pretty sure that there may be a real game, like real life game, um, Duck Hunter. There was a popular game in the 90s, 90s, something like that, 90s, maybe like 2010, uh, 2000. Uh, seven that time 90s and stuff and not too long ago well pretty long ago like 2016 or 18 17 something like that um there was a game VR game called um duck hunter and the duck hunter is like you have a VCR connected to or a console connected to the TV and then when you play Duck Hunter, you, there's a gun connected to the console, then you have to shoot all the ducks on the TV. That's like the classic game. And then the VR version is pretty much that, only that there's some horror story going on at the same time. Told you the, told you the kind scope will go dim because of your console. Where will you find a TV, where will we find a TV technician in this hole? <laughs> he haw he. Maybe it's just the settings. Please go see for yourself. Strange, it worked fine in the morning. Maybe the snowfall caused it. Mum rubbed her hands hands clean on her apron and went to Olya's room. Okay, now that she's gone, maybe we can do something else, like with this perhaps. No, maybe this. Oh, maybe we can take the telephone thing now. Aha, uh, I'm smart. Han, 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 han. Telephone two zero three three seven. Senior Lieutenant Tikhanov, Konstantin Vladimori Vladimirovich. Okay, interesting. So we have that now. Turn back. Can we do anything with this? Anton, get your ass out of that closet immediately. Okay, we can't do anything with that, with this perhaps, or your toy with this, a black cross maybe with this, and to get your hands off the phone. Okay, let's just go. 
Wow. The house on its own looks pretty nice, but with all that forest around it and that bl it's just so much more scary and because it's all black and white, it's even more scary. Don't call me a baby, okay? It is actually scary. A bit, just a bit. I opened the front gate and went into the field. Oh, look, his footprints. Carefully, so mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed, when I crossed half of the, half of the distance toward the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. That's a lot of snow, mama mia. I remembered my nightly fears. Oh, I saw the silhouettes around here. They were jumping around, holding hands. That hypnotizing music started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of day, those distant figures felt like a simple dream. The sun turned my nightmare to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears. Distort, dis, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me and a barely audible whisper in my head blurry and almost kind wow that's a scary ass forest holy moly everything was silent so silent i felt like the world was totally empty no ground no sky no parents no all year. the time reached its limits and a one-way trip that ended at the forest's piney stockade. Look, there's different footprints. There's f footprints here and there's footprints here. Hmm, interesting. Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing, and both me and Olya turned to stone listening to them. But then always came the ringing silence. Our apartment became numb a couple of days before we departed. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around, laughing or spent time together. Almost like it all, almost like all of it was in a previous life. Whew. When they kissed with Olya present, she always frowned, frowned and snorted in a funny way. But one day, it all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Something important had left our home, and something scary filled the remaining world. It was as if a fire broke up, and our parents were hurriedly packing our belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who though? From the people with dead cold eyes, who sometimes visit us, visited us in our previous home. The eyes had only saw balls of worms in the black ground and everything. And somewhere far away a siren was going off, trying to warn us of the coming menace. Oh my god. That's me. That kind of looks like Vova actually. Remember in the last episode there was an officer, a police officer, who showed us a picture of Vova, the missing kid. I look pretty similar actually, I do have to say so. Maybe I, I, I am Vova. Plot twist. <gasps> I shuddered, chasing away my delusions and looked around. There were only me, this white field and the wind that was whipping up icy dust and belts of powdered snow. I, I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding whiteness. Knobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotten leaves and coniferous needles froze into the ice. What the hell? What's that? That's like a... I forgot what you call it. There's, you know, in winter you always, when it's cold, you put always like things on your hand. I'm not completely sure what they call, but they may be called hand shoes. I may be, I may be um, mixing that up with the German word, which is hand shoe, which is hand shoe. So maybe it is hand shoe in English, but I'm not sure about that. Dry prickly branches intertwined, intertwined, bringing up uncomfortable thoughts about the fences, about fences. Were they protecting the forest? Or were they keeping something from breaking out? Ooh, scary! Some object was hanging from one of the pointy branches. 
I tried to get closer, drowning in, in snow, and when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. You call it a mitten? To be honest, I don't think I've ever heard, well, I may have heard the word mitten, but I've never called this a mitten. Maybe I'm just stupid, who knows. It looked like a wounded bird among the hungering semi-dark. Should I take it to the police? I wanted to say popo, but then I wanted to say police, so it was like police, something like that. The senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. Streets of Broken Lights, a Russian mystery TV series telling a story of a of the daily life of the Russian police officers. It's the longest running series in the history of Russian TV at the moment. We are getting a lot of information about uh, Russian like uh, things. He was he was all he was also always anxious with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Will this mitten help them find the lost boy? I heard a distant shout. Looked like it came from the river. So there were there was just there was there was a voice a, a shouting vova or searching for vova? Now this is second voice, but this time it's a female? What the hell is going on? As if the trees were calling out to someone. Vova, did you not listen? Resounded closer to me. If that's getting closer to you, that's the cue to run. You need to get the frick out of there. Someone was standing there, behind the trees, hiding. Time to get my protection up. So, so, so he saw a person, a people person, hiding behind a tree, if I'm not mistaken. Hiding behind a tree. Interesting. Scary at the same time, though. I mean, what if he attacks you? I knew someone was looking for the lost boy, but still, something was unsettling about that figure, yeah. Why would someone, if there's someone searching for a lost boy, why would he be hiding from you? He, he should like ask if you saw him or something like that. So I don't think he's looking for the lost boy, and it's definitely unsettling. It's still, it's stillness. But was bent unnaturally toward the ground. It's blackness. There's no one there, just branches and roots. It's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped its wingly, wings loudly. So, if you go in the forest or any place where there's trees and there's like a bird or a group of birds there sitting on there, and then all of a sudden they just fly away. It means that someone or something is close to it making noise and the birds are always like... For example, if there's birds on a on a tree and then a car f f uh, drives by, the birds always like uh, fly away. So this probably means that someone or something is close to you and watching you from the shadows. Uh, Oh, oh my god! What was that? A shadow split from the trees and disappeared from my sight. Oh my god, that was scary. I always have a feeling something is behind me now. I'm getting creeps. I looked away for just a moment, but when I turned my gaze back to the same place, it was gone. Doo -doo -doo. So it was my imagination after all. Well, it was not your imagination entirely. I mean, we saw it move. So it's not your imagination, probably. Silence. 
Silence reigned for a painful long time. Mm. My muscles were tightly strung. My heart was beating somewhere in my throat. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the thicket and I'd sprint. But nothing of, of the sort happened. I looked at the mitten once more. Okay, okay guys, really quick. To make this gameplay more, a little bit more interesting, so we get more story and more content, and you can see me a little bit more scared, we are going to take it. Now I know uh, this, if, I, if this was real life, I would not take it. But to make this a little bit more interesting, this gameplay, I'm gonna take it. I know I shouldn't, but I'm gonna. Hmm. I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. Oh, oh my god. That is freaking terrifying. That shadow is terrifying and the sound it makes when it walks. Oh my god. A shout rumbled across the field and dissolved into the distance. No echo, no hope for a reply. I stepped toward the bristly trees and tried to clear my find. It didn't budge. I pulled harder. The branch cracked. And the mitten tore off, landing in my hand with a squishy sound. All too heavy. Wet. I squeezed it without thinking and something dark spilled from it, forming a tiny string between the mitten and the snow. What the hell? Steam rose from the snow pile. The heck? Is that blood? What the hell? I froze in place, studying my palms in disgust. Oh my god, is that blood? Is Vova dead? Oh my god, red. The sound of cracking branches invaded the silence. Bro, run, run. I didn't have to... I didn't have to think twice before running away. Run. What sound? Someone was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches close to the distance of giant leaps. Snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts flew through my mind. I'll get caught. They'll get me. I'll get dragged into the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice. Probably one of reasons it gave me strength. Spurred me on. You can do it. Don't stop. That's like a wolf or a dog. What the hell? I heard an animal roar behind me. What the hell was that? Now that roar is way too loud for any wolf, any dog. Even a even a pack of wolves or dog would not be able to make that sound. That roar is like something Bigfoot or something like that would make. God damn, that, that, that's some sort of demon. It was so loud, my ears went numb. It, it felt like the sound had come from a pack of hungry beasts rather than a single one. The nostrils sucked in freezing air. They sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. Two giant wings? What the hell? An enormous shadow flew over the clearing, a hoot, a wheeze. The walls were coming from all directions now. Those do not sound like wolves or dogs. No, no, those sound like demons. From the dried up raspberry bush, from twisted pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run, don't look back. It felt like I was inside a nightmare. The snowy clearing became vicious like quicksand. I was stuck in place. I pulled my leg from the mushy trap just to be caught in a new one, even deeper than before. I continued to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was snow ever this sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing this wasn't snow. Someone or something in the snow pile was clutching my pants. I gathered all my strength and rushed forward. 
The pressure on my legs was gone. My boots slipped out of the hole, and my soles, on a soles were on a hard surface again. I reached a clear path with one jump, and from there, ran to my house. Its gloomy facade didn't look threatening now. The house was my line of defense from the shadows that flapped their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. In all my hurry, I still managed to notice the claw marks, as if a dog was striking the wood with, with its paws, demanding to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. The heartbeat in the heartbeat heartbeat in my ears was so was much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. What if they already what if they were already in our front yard and Mom had locked the door? Drowning in fear, I put on the doorknob and obediently gave and it obediently gave away. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Damn. What was that? Oh, that was scary. Now, real quick before we go any further. So, he said he noticed claw marks. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he, those claw marks are supposed to be on the front door. So if that's true, does that mean that the nightmare, well, because in the last episode, uh, Anton had a nightmare, or if it was a nightmare, because it was kind of too realistic to be a nightmare, but when I got killed, I woke up like it was a nightmare anyways, in that nightmare, there was also some sort of creature scratching at the front door. So does that mean that the nightmare was not a nightmare? And now real quick, be really quiet and just listen. I can hear some some like deep breathing from some sort of creature like a wolf or something. Just listen. See that? That is not a breathing of a human. Porch planks cre creaked. Is this a cracked or creaked? I'm not sure. As, men, as my pursuers ascended the stairs, my fingers slipped off the lock and I couldn't click it, it into place. Uh-oh. I gritted my teeth and pulled hard on the iron knob, whipping it between the boards. I, start, I stared bl blankly at the door. Someone was standing on the other side of that pitiful, flimsy barrier, barrier that was probably less useful than blankets. Wheezing breath reached into the house and crashed, crashed at me in waves. It smelled of it smelled of pine and sweat. Mom peeked out of the kitchen, and chest, chest, chastised me, chastised me. I don't know, me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to Dad. What exactly did you not? Did you un? What exactly didn't you understand when I told you you never slammed the door? I, I didn't mean to. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone, and the breath was too. Here, yeah, the bre the breathing of that that heavy breathing is actually gone. Is this all just imagination? Imaginations. This game has to do a lot with shadows, imaginations, the forest, dark forests. Uh, what else? nightmares and stuff who if there was someone in the first place of course here mere five meters away from mom my fears slowly weakening was slowly weakening melting like snow in spring and with it with and with it the last bit of strength I had left my body too my legs gave away I propped myself up against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Mom's expre expression had changed immediately. The cold mass of strictness and detachment was gone. Mom looked at the same. Mom looked the same before all those quarrels. She finally saw my condition, my wet pants plastered with snow. 
Where have you been? What did I tell you, huh? I told you to stay home. Am I nothing to you too? I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her like when I was very little and wanted her to cuddle me. But mom regained her composure fast and put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel. Her voice rang out. Your dad can't find his cigarettes. Be honest, did you snatch them? Were you smoking in secret? Does this mom seriously think that I, I, her son, would snatch my dad's cigarettes in smoke in secret outside with this predators waiting for me? I mean, who, who does she think she is? Why would she think that I would steal cigarettes? I don't even know where they are. Gosh, dang it. I, th there was something chasing me. I, I, I thought, I started as soon as I started explaining myself. Tears rolled up in my eye, welled up in my eyes. Mom leaned, leaned toward me and sniffed my clothes, clothes, like a beast searching for the smell of tobacco. Then she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. The hell? That's an expression which means there's some sort of... Maybe there was actually some predators following me. Her, just, her expression changed in an instant and she covered her mouth with her hand. That's not good. Look over there at the fence. My heart started thump, thumping as, as if I became prey one, once again <laughs> once. And my pursuers were following me in the field. I could swear that I've heard something scratch at the door, just like in my nightmare. Mom be beaconed me with her fingers, and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window, facing my fears. Fear. <sighs> that barking sounded so realistic, I actually thought there was a dog outside. Uh, Barking, and then all of a sudden, I got a weird uh, feeling in my stomach, almost like I was on a roller coaster. Now, real quick, I'm gonna need. I need. I need something to drink. My lips are so dry. Always been playing this game. There's so much reading. It is insane. But at the same time, this game is just amazing. I love the story. I love how it's scary. And if there's scary things, I like it to make videos of it because I always love my reactions. So I just hope you love them as well. And you actually know what? This game has become one of my favorite games. A horror game has become one of my favorite games. <laughs> when I said to myself, this is one of my favorite games now, I had to laugh myself, man. I could barely discern some hairy silhouettes swimming in snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass one two three four five six seven dogs seven dogs were chasing you down holy moly dogs just a small pack of strays with no name and owner barely reminding me of the hungry monster that live on the edge of the forest oh boy were you scared of them i think they'd rather be scared of you anton whoa who who the hell does she think she is right now she's reacting like a big sister making fun of me i went outside looking for clues about the lost boy vova then i got haunted by some shadow then i got chased down by dogs i literally risked my life they chased me down they wanted to eat me it's either eat or be eaten and she makes fun of me dogs is she oh boy were you scared of them i think they'd rather be scared of you anton mom mrs mom of anton mrs mom yes dogs can be especially wild dogs can be very vicious they can tear a human 
they can they can kill a human in such a small amount of time. I am not even joking. Dogs, especially wild dogs, are very dangerous. And she makes fun of me. Okay, moving on. They they were chasing me like a bunny. That's the first thing in this game that this has anything to do with bunny. This game is called Tiny Bunny and it's the first time that there's something to do with bunny, like the name, uh, the word bunny. It's the first thing, man. And and what if the rabbit? Oh, excuse me. The smile had slowly disappeared from mom's face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it was her first time seeing them. What if they attack Alia? Mom? I wish your dad could just shoot them all. Boom! Just like that. <laughs> Mom, look! They're alive! What the hell am I talking about? Huh? What? Are they your friend or foe after all? Make up your mind. What am I talking about? Look mom, they're alive. What? You're not a little kid anymore. Mom sighed in the an annoyance and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze on the cobweb written corner. Well, some detective I am. Some detective you are, man oh man. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a pack of stupid strays. And what for? What use do I have for this? Mitten. Of course! A dark and sticky mitten that belonged to the lost boy made a squishy sound in my hand. Seemed like, seems like I was clutching it the whole time. That's my trump card as a detective. I heard it, I hurried to present this, present this clue to my mom. Mom, look, this is Volva's mitten. How can you be sure this is Volva's? And oh my god. That. That is a lot of blood. Did Volva's hand get like bitten off or something? My god. That boy the police were asking about in the morning. It's drenched, drenched in blood. I found it hanging on a tree. I can show you where. Let's call the police right away, like the officer had told us to. Mom, look! Ew! A shadow of, of doubt slowly crept onto Mom's contorted face, as if she was trying to remember something distant, like someone tries to remember their dream, but the ima image slips away. Stop it! This moment! I will go insane if she hears you. She already has trouble sleeping in wine and whines all the time. And you joke around like this? I joke around like this? I risk my life to find the lost boy and she says I joke around like that. Oh. Well isn't that just perfect? At that moment I realized the mitten was actually wet from snow. Man, imagination. Your imagination. You, what you... My character, I, Anton. He is seeing a lot of different things that are not real. Man oh man. There was no blood whatsoever. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. Come here my boy who cried. Come here my boy who cried wolf. Oh don't just stand here. Come take your pills. You have pills? A golden colored pill. Reminiscent of a dead wasp fell into my palm. I already took one during breakfast. Don't talk over me. I told you to stay home and you. That would have given you a good written for that. Come on, take it or you won't be able to sleep at night. And you should. And you have school tomorrow. Oh god, no. So I had to swallow the bitter medication, drinking it down in s with similar awful water that gave off a 
taste of chlorine. Maybe it wasn't Volva's mitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. Just like the forest monsters and all yours owl. Am I going mad? What the hell was that? What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate effect or my over -ex exerted brain didn't let fear inside me anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing Yoni indifference, bringing Yoni indifference along with it. And then you're done. See, you can do it when you try. Take off your coat. Are you asleep? No, mom. I, w I was just thinking. What about? I wonder. It's just something silly. Mom scrutinized me with a sus with suspicious eyes. As if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son and not some doppelganger that came from the forest. Now that word is really weird because doppel is a German word and doppel means double. And ganger or ganger is not a German word. But maybe ganger, maybe it's English, but I wouldn't know what it, it would mean. But if it is an English word, it's weird because why would they mix up an Eng English and a German word? It's weird. Is everything alright? You had the exact same expression when the policeman asked you about the window. I'm alright, mom. She heaved a deep sigh. Fine. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa fabric had become discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bottom bathroom tiles. The light bulbs also felt different, dimmer and yellower. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. All I was done rewatching watching her favorite Little Mermaid episode and switched to other tapes. I slowly changed into my home clothes, clothes stopped before the sink and studied my reflection in the mirror. I like was trying to solve one of those spot the difference puzzles. Can I not go to the phone or something? Maybe later because I have the number now. 20337 I think. I'm not sure. Then I went upstairs. Oh look it's me. The fast and Lagos voice died down. So this is Olya's room I think. I walked past Olya's bedroom and slipped into my own. Oh my god. There's someone standing there. Look. There's, there's a shadow or something standing there. There's the feet. The hell? Can you not see it? The forest didn't look and scream during the day. Entangled tree branches in the distance in the snowy field between our house and the forest brought sleepiness to my eyes. But sometimes I would still catch myself looking in the window at the icy treetops instead of, instead of doing my homework. Can I tip it again? Oops. How strange. I remember moving this curtain. Yeah, there's someone there. Okay, what else is there? Mm, this one. So let's try to tap everyone, every little thing twice, and maybe a third time, because we can get different information out of them. I've dreamt of becoming an artist since the day, since, since the day, since that bought me my first comic book. Fly magazine was the coolest. I especially liked the big space related edition with alien monsters and that funny episode about Gendarme. The hell? Um, here. Fly, the first Soviet and Russian periodic adult comic magazine, extremely popular during the crazy 90s. What made the comic stand out was the refusal to use material from its foreign counterparts. Interesting! We are learning more and more about Russian things. I started drawing all kinds of stuff since the day I, since that day, and I it I seem to be getting pretty good at it. You are pretty good at it. Is that a ninja turtle? <laughs> 
One of my letters even got published in Fly once. Maybe someday they'll even publish my, my comic. Oops, I right clicked again. And again, my best works. Still the same. Okay, this one now, right? Yeah. My triceratop, triceratops figurine. I know all of. I know about all sorts of dinosaurs, Velociraptors, Afrovenators, Hypsilophodons. Now, I, I'm pretty good with dinosaurs as well. I know all kinds of dinosaurs like Triceratops, Velociraptors, uh, uh, T-Rex, Spinosaurus, and Kylosaurus, and so on. Ceratosaurus, Gigantosaurus and stuff, but I have never heard of an Afrovenators, Afrovenators, if you speak it like that, and a Hypsolophidons. I may have heard that, but this definitely not. I remember going to the movies to see Jurassic Park, classic, back when we still lived in the city and taking pictures with the T-Rex in the hall. It turned, it turned its head and roared. It was awesome. And next to it was a robotic transformer. I love this cartoon. When a jet fighter speeds up into up the intro among the sounds of blasted fire, you know your next 20 minutes will surely be amazing. Centraide Space Station is captured. Rick, get ready for battle. Can we press it again? My toys, a triceratops and a robotech. Oh god, I pressed right click again. What else? Um, this one and that's it. Yeah. Monsters, ghosts, UFOs. Monsters, ghosts, UFOs. The Encyclopedia of Paranormal Phenomenon from Roseman Publishing. I've learned about the Loch Ness Monster, Medusa Gorgon, and Bigfoot from there. Olya is always scared of that book. She could barely handle sifting through the monster and alien sections with me. But the middle part, where they start to talk about ghosts, really freaked her out. I even remember hunting ghosts after I'd read their book. I measured the distance between items on my table every evening and checked if they moved due to some supernatural force come the morning. They didn't. But to be honest, was I expecting to meet Gasper the ghost? To begin. I know this book by heart already. Tip again. Okay, let's see if we can tip anything else. You never know, you never know. Okay, let's open this. One of the drawers was empty. I hit the policeman phone number along with the mitten there. Okay. 20337. I was right, baby. I'm smart. This simple action drained the last bit of strength from me. This reading is draining the last bit of strength from me as well. I sat on the bed. That's terrifying. And only then I noticed there was someone behind the curtain. Or maybe something. My, tired, my tight hand dropped to the sheets. Whether it was due to the medication I took or the, or the stress I underwent. The room began to contour it, as if the wind was blowing the walls out like pairs of sails. The room corners bent and undulated. The only silver thing in the whole room was the figure between the windowsill and the curtains. The flimsy piece of cloth was stuck to my hidden visitor, just like a seventh of sorts. Olya? Who else would be standing there? I stood up and licked my dried up lips. Oh, Olya, it's so funny. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Olya, it's so funny. The silhouette was unmoving. It was enveloped softly by the curtains. It's as if there was a thick layer of darkness there, not a human being. I reached toward the curtains. Badum, 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 beat my heart. Badum, badum. Beat my heart, controlled by medication. The wind sang in the field with a chorus, with a chorus of voices. For a second, I wanted to return to bed, 
just lay down and watch the person behind the curtain, knowing full well they were looking back at me, and looking without blinking, waiting for me to fall asleep. Plastic rings rustled against the holder when I pulled open the curtains. Are you freaking serious? Olya again. This is the second time now that she uh, she has scared us. The first time was in that nightmare, if it was a nightmare. This is the second time already. God damn. Gotcha. I knew it was you from the beginning. A blindingly bright halo. Hello, halo. Lit up above Olya's head with the setting sun as the background. My sister was shining. When she was just a baby, Dad always used to say she was shining with happiness. I always retorted, but Dad, she's not some flashlight. But I brought her to the window one day and sunlight poured on her smiling face. I felt like I was holding a child woven from light. Woven? I saw everything. Oh, really? What did you hide? She was just like my mom. She was just oh, she was she was just like my mom when she was little, before she put on her sad mask of tiredness and switched to her commanding tone of vo tone of voice. It's nothing, just Oya went up to the table, her eyes round and asked You stole something and hid it there. Are you a thief? What? Don't be stupid. I didn't steal anything. A clear image came to mind. That mitten hanging from a tree branch. That was kind of scary. What if I did steal it after all? From the forest, from the tilted figures standing behind black trees, Oya could be selfish and stubborn when she wanted. Then show me. Swear that you won't tell anyone. Then I'll show you. Oya wore a plotting smile. And that smile is scary. Um, it's like about just <laughs> that smile is from a murderer. She's about to kill me, man. Oh my god. You know what I just realized? Okay, okay, guys. Look in the middle of the screen at the bottom. The bottom, the bottom, this bottom. The furthest down you can see, you can see all your pants. And on that pants is a bunny. There's a bunny on Olya's pants. A bunny. In the game called Tiny Bunny. That bunny. I think this bunny has to do with the actual Tiny Bunny. Or maybe it is the Tiny Bunny. Who knows? Even more mysterious things. We get no answers. Only more mysteries. Okay, I swear on mom's heart, an oath she heard in one of the movies about the pioneers we've watched. Pioneer movement, an umbrella term for communist children organizations existing around the world, somewhat reminiscent of the scout movement. Don't say things like that. Ola nodded and made a gesture while her hand, with her hand, Locking her mouth with an imaginary key, like like this, like like this, like 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 this. I don't know. She was filled with curiosity that was splashing in her giant eyes. I opened the drawer and Olya leaned in, holding her breath. It looked like there was not just a simple mitten, but some sort of exotic critter. Is 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 this someone's mitten? She said that is she. Sh she said that as if she couldn't understand what she saw. A certain boy lost it and got lost himself. Now you do now you do understand how da now you do understand how dangerous it is for kids to wander into the forest, right? He must really he must be really cold out there. Will they find him? Yeah, they will. Is 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 Olya not gonna ask about the letter? from the policeman the police are going to house are going house to house showing this photo to everybody 
Ola traversed the room with care and pressed her tiny palms against the window. And why are they going to houses and not the forest? Are they scared? The question caught me off guard. The police aren't scared of anything. Yeah, right. Flashed in my clouded mind. Yeah, the policemen may not go into the forest because they w don't want to get lost themselves. And maybe there were police officers that were looking for the boy that went into the forest but never came back. I don't know. Did they really check every nook and cranny where darkness, cold, and whisper of icy branches dwell? If that's the case, how did they miss the mitten? Or did it appear later for me? I changed the topic, as if trying to get Olya as far away as possible from the forest thicket. We make it a reward if I go and find this boy my, by myself. A lot of stuff. A l I just heard something. That was terrifying. A lot of stuff like in Field of Wonders. Field of Wonders, a Soviet and Russian TV game show. Field of Wonders, a Soviet and Russian TV game show, still running to this day, coming out every Friday, can be described as a partially adapted version of Wheel of Fortune. Sounds cool, right? Olya wasn't listening to me. She was piercing the forest with incredible adult eyes, uncharacteristic for her. What if the owl got him? Nonsense, an owl won't be able to lift a human. But you know what? I was picking my words with utmost care. I forced him out of my overexerted brain. Stay away from the forest. I think it's... I think it's... How should I put it? It's cursed or something. Just like in a fairy tale? No, not like that. More like in the spooky tape mom and dad are hiding from us. Olya shivered and stole a glance at the window. I saw you running away. Someone was chasing you. No, it's just I was hurrying back home. So mom, so mom, so mom won't be worried. You should tell her the truth, man. The truth can hurt. But the truth is the truth. Yeah. As I looked at my sister, my heart was tearing apart. She was so fragile, it was so easy to stifle her light. A gust of wind and a small fire would be gone. You're lucky. Mom won't even let me go outside. I'm like a princess in the tower. Can't go anywhere. I'll die from boredom here. You're wrong. No one has ever died of boredom. And you have me and your cartoons. And Mom and Dad will be good to each other soon. You know what I would wish for my next birthday? On my next birthday? I'd wish for mom and dad to turn into children so we could could so we could go and play together like we used to. Whew. I think that's a good note to leave it off because I've been going for quite a long time. An hour and three minutes, which is really long. So yeah. But yeah guys, um, I think I'm going to leave this video here. It's been good. We have uncovered some mysteries, but we've also encountered even more mysteries. But yeah, um, I hope you're enjoying this little series of Tiny Bunny because I really enjoy it. So I just hope you enjoyed as well. And yeah, I, I think I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you enjoyed it and I will leave... And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.